The Chandrayaan landing process can be divided into several stages. Stage 1. The Vikram lander starts its descent from 30 kilometers. Stage 2. At 7.4 kilometers, the thrusters fires up making a rough braking process to slow down the landing craft. Stage 3. At this phase, Vikram lander uses attitude hold. This is the autopilot settings that will hold the pitch of the aircraft constant when set to this mode at this angle. Stage 4. It is here the thrusters initiate the fine braking process to slow down the Vikram lander. Stage 5. This is the terminal descends phase. It is at this stage it uses two thrusters to land on the surface of the moon. If the lasers and cameras detect uneven ground is pre-programmed to be moved 150 meters and search for an optional landing site. Let's look at the step-by-step -step process of how it would have landed. Step number one. The Vikram lander, a vital piece of Chandrayaan-3, is at a staggering 745.5 kilometers away from its landing target. It's up there, hovering around 30 kilometers above the moon's rugged landscape, cruising along at a steady 1.6 kilometers per second. Step number two. Now hold on to your seats. In just 690 seconds, something absolutely extraordinary is about to occur. Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander is about to fire up its four thrusters, akin to gently tapping bicycle brakes. This meticulously timed maneuver will kick off a controlled deceleration, softly guiding the lander closer to the lunar surface. Step number three, the moment we've been waiting for arrives. The onboard computer gives a resolute nod, and in just the next 73 seconds, the Cram lander embarks on its final stretch, covering those crucial 150 meters. The four thrusters will synchronize in such a way to achieve a soft landing experience with a little bounce here and there. And if all goes well, we can call this a complete safe landing. Let's look at the basic steps-by-step -step process of launching this rocket. Step number one. The rocket's functioning revolves around a staged combustion cycle, employing liquid-fueled engines for both its core and supplementary boosters. Propelling the core stage is the Vikas engines. Step number two. Concurrently, two solid propellant boosters contribute extra thrust during the initial launch phase. The upper stage of the LVM-3 incorporates the C-20 engine, an indigenous cryogenic engine developed in-house, furnishing the required thrust to attain the intended orbit. Step number three. The vehicle initiates liftoff through the simultaneous ignition of the two boosters. Following this, the core stage L110 is ignited roughly 113 seconds into the flight. Both S200 boosters burn for around 134 seconds and separation occurs at the 137 second mark. Step number four. The payload fairing housing the satellite is subsequently detached at an altitude of 115 kilometers above the planet, approximately 217 seconds after launch. Step number five. Chandrayaan-3 integrated module separates from the launcher and opens its solar panels. Step number six. It is here the module will commence orbit raising maneuvers. After orbiting for a few hours, the module will shift orientation toward the sun. It will make around five orbits around the Earth. In layman's terms, they call this a slingshot technique, using the gravitational pull of the Earth and the internal thrusters to achieve the Moon-to-Earth orbit path. Step number seven. It is at this stage the module will get captured in the Moon-Earth orbit. It will then use the thrusters to slow down the module. Step number eight. Lander will separate from the orbiter. Step number nine. Even after detaching the lunar orbiter, we'll still be working scanning the lunar surface for possible landing operations. Step number 10. The lander will then initiate the deboosting procedures as shown in the animations. Step number 11. After a successful soft landing, the lander will open its door. The rover will move out to explore and conduct scientific experiments as shown in these animations. For this reason, upon landing, the Chandrayaan-3 mission will operate for one lunar day. Yes, that's right, but this is equivalent to 14 Earth days, as shown in these animations. This is due to the extreme cold on the south pole of the moon, freezing all its equipment. 
is because there is no sunlight to power the lander and the orbiter. But the Russian Luna 25 mission was made to survive harsh freezing temperatures as it planned to use a radioisotope device to generate heat using plutonium as a source at night. That means it was planned to last for one year on the moon, but unfortunately, it crashed. Presenting the billion-dollar question, why did they require 40 days for the Chandrayaan-3 lunar exploration mission to reach the southern pole of the moon? In contrast, China's Chang'e 2, launched in 2010, only took four days to cover the distance between Earth and the moon. The Soviet Union's Luna 1, the pioneering unmanned mission that came close to the moon, accomplished the journey in a mere 36 hours. Even Apollo 11's command module, Columbia, which carried three astronauts, reached the moon in just slightly over four days. While the ISRO program has a budget of just $75 million, which is the main reason they have to use the ingenious method to lower costs by implementing the gravitational pull of the moon and the Earth to get to its destination because of its less powerful rockets. The Chinese Chang'e 2 cost around $219 million. Adjusted to inflation, it's over $316 million. The Soviet Union Luna 1 in the 1960s cost around $200 million when adjusted to inflation. The estimated cost of the Soviet Union lunar program in 1964 was $6 to $10 billion. And the most ambitious program, Apollo 11, cost a staggering $25 billion during the 1960s, and when adjusted to present-day inflation, it's around $200 billion. The bottom line is the rockets were not powerful enough to make a direct trajectory to the moon, possibly due to the extremely low budget but ingeniously took the slingshot method to achieve this mission. But unfortunately, its counterpart, this Russian's Luna 25, had some technical problems during pre-orbital stage. The Luna 25 thrusters struggled to calculate and counteract the moon's gravitational pull, resulting in an uncontrolled spinning motion. When it was time for the thrusters to initiate the debraking process in outer space, they were unable to sufficiently decelerate the lander. As a consequence, the lander entered the moon's orbit without the activation of the required thrusters, or it might have pushed the thrusters a little bit too much required for a soft landing. These events caused the Luna 25 to spin uncontrollably and ultimately experience a hard crash landing, bringing an abrupt end to its mission. Here's how we make our videos in short. We use Blender for our 3D animations. Composite the entire animations in After Effects and edit all of our files in Premiere editing software. So please do us a solid and hit the subscribe button. Till then, check out the many engineering animations as we make original videos from scratch in 4K 3D animation with just two people working on this channel. So please like and subscribe for more videos to come.